guys. For my first company back from my leave of absence, I will be looking into a company that I literally use every single day for multiple hours on end. Yeah, that's right. This week, we'll be looking into the company Spotify. Truly a revolutionary service that people overlook every single day. So if any of that interests you guys at all, let's get into it. Welcome back guys, uh, and I'm glad to finally be back. I was gone because of a mixture of reasons. Uh, I got a new job, you know, exhaustion, and even writer's block, you know, sometimes I get that. Uh, but today we'll be looking into Spotify as a company in, in general. We're gonna be looking uh, at them compared to their competitors. We're gonna be looking at their pricing system. We're gonna be looking at them on a chart, and I'll be wrapping up with a statement on whether or not I think Spotify is a buy in my eyes. Obviously. Not your guys' eyes, because you guys talk to your financial advisors every day, right? Good. So, guys, without further ado, let's finally get into the video. And actually, before we get started, uh, I just want to say, guys, please remember that I am just a YouTuber, and my, my, my opinions literally do not matter. So, let's get into it. Starting off differently this time compared to all of my other videos, let's look at the chart right off the rip. Looking at a five-year one-day chart, seeing how Spotify went public around April of 2018, I figured this will give us a decent look at what has happened during the lifetime of Spotify. And to be honest, for the first year and a half, the price stayed relatively neutral uh, in the $150 range, almost hitting 200 in the summer of 2018, but it wasn't until recently of 2020 when the stock started really taking off. Now, zooming in closer, let's look at a one year, one day chart. Uh, it's been a while since I've talked about the volume shelves, so let me brush off the dust uh, or the rust. Let me brush off the, let me brush off the rust. Yeah, let's do that. One of my old mentors taught me about these volume shelves. Uh, they're an indicator on the vertical axis rather than the horizontal axis, right? And basically it has made it easier for me and many others to see where the majority of buying and selling was or where it was happening. When we look at this chart, the first volume shelf I see is this one right here priced around $150, right? This one. And that's the range that I was talking about earlier when we were looking at the five year one day chart. The second major shelf is located at the $250 price range. And that is where it was sitting until November and December when Spotify decided to jump up to $340 at a high of $346.44. Now, the reason I like to bring up the factor of the price shelves is is because it helps me determine when to buy into the company. So let's break this down a little bit. Common practice or common rule for this, you know, this method, the bigger the shelf, the harder it is to break through, otherwise known as a support and, and really vice versa. So just by looking at this chart right now, I would want the stock to fall back to this $250, $260 range because that is the next major sh support or s shelf. The shelf that is being created right now at the $340 range is really small, which means it would be pretty easy to break through, which means if you were to buy in right now at the $340 range, it wouldn't be hard for you to lose all your money or at least a lot of your investment. So overall, I really do like the chart. However, I would like to see it drop before I do invest myself. So kind of now moving backwards a little bit since we started with the chart, let's start looking into Spotify as a company. Spotify technically has three different models or, or plans. Starting off with number one, it is the one I think that is the most known plan and honestly maybe the most popular one. Uh, it's the premium plan, which comes to about $9.99 a month or $4.99 a month as long as you're a student in college, maybe even possibly high school students too. Uh, by the way, I think Apple Music also has this option. However, this means that you get all the music that you want or podcasts and download them to your account, uh, which then you can use offline uh, with no advertisements. Unless you're listening to the Joe Rogan podcast where you get the occasional inter uh, you know, break for some reason. Oh, oh, eh, eh. I recently got one of these and I was kind of upset about it, so I'm gonna... I'm gonna harp on it. Or you have the family option, which is valued at $14.99 a month. Now this tops out about six accounts uh, on the family plan, which is a good price, but the catch is that the family needs to all reside at the, at the same address. And lastly, we got the last option here, which honestly, I do not know why you would use this option. I think it really defeats the whole purpose of the Spotify romance. Uh, but I am talking about the free option. The free version gives you unlimited ad-supported streaming, shuffle-only playback on songs on mobile, access to podcasts and videos, 
the web has access to on-demand access. It is actually stated that 91% of Spotify's revenue uh, comes from the subscription model and the other 9% comes from advertisements. It is stated on the revenue that Spotify has created, it saves about 30%. And then the remaining percentage, it splits up between licensing, producing, making collabs, and uh, actually paying out the artists. So a big question that I think concerns Spotify and one that you know you and I have about Spotify is where are they gonna be in 10 plus years? How will it change? What's gonna be new? What are their different prices gonna be for their different plans? And really so many other questions. But we gotta remember that we're asking these questions because we want to know where Spotify is gonna be in 10, 15, 20, and 30 plus years down the road. So let's start looking into it. And when I first researched, my first Google search brought me to The Motley Fool. And here are some of my key takeaways for them. Spotify, the world leader in subscription music streaming, is likely to be multiples of its current size in 10 years. Here's where the company could be by then. Well, that sounds pretty strong right off the bat. The company's subscription streaming business is growing like crazy. At the end of March, Spotify had 130 million premium subscribers globally. A figure that grew 31% year over year. Impressively, the company's momentum barely slowed down from 32% growth posted a year ago prior, despite the COVID-19 pandemic. You know, regardless of my feelings towards Spotify so far, uh, after reading that, you know, the second portion right there, even though it still grew, I was surprised to see that it didn't grow even more, especially during the time of complete lockdown. People were just, you know, sitting around, you know, people were watching Netflix, people were watching Hulu, people were watching YouTube, people were listening to music. So I thought maybe they would have seen something more. Obviously they haven't. So um, it's good that they kept up with growth, growth, you know, 32%, 31%. So they only lost or they, you know, they didn't perform as well by 1%. However, you know, it's still good in a, in a year like this. Inventing and maintaining a service as popular as Spotify requires an intense focus on audio streaming that only Spotify has. Streaming music is an immaterial part of the overall business for most of the company's competitors. That is why Spotify has been pulling away from the number two competitor, Apple Music, which used to disclose subscriber numbers every few months, but now has been silent on that topic since June 2019. Instead, Apple now talks about the achieving all-time revenue records in music, which is less impressive than it sounds. Almost any service that is growing should be achieving new revenue highs. Now, the reason I this part struck me and I wanted to bring it up is because Spotify's greatest competitor, Apple Music, has realized that they can't compete in the subscription, um, the subscriber growth category. Uh, they decided to not even release those numbers rather than create a new you know, data point that would make them seem uh, valuable to maybe their investors, maybe, you know, I don't know, I don't know if users or you know, people that are looking to start a subscription somewhere, then they wouldn't go, hey, wait, which one's bringing in the most revenue? Majority of people would go, hey, Google, which one's the most popular one? And depending on you know, what Google says, that's the, usually the one people go with. Over the long term, Spotify is likely to gain further share of listening in the car as unlimited data plans continue to get cheaper, and more cars have embedded modems in them. When Spotify and other streaming services are built into vehicle entertainment systems, these services are likely to take enormous amounts of the market share away from uh, AM or FM radio. Spotify is bringing big innovation to podcast advertising. Historically, podcast advertisers didn't have much helpful data about the number of people who heard an ad, how many times they hear it, and whether it drove any new business. That has limited the value of podcasts to advertisers since they don't know what they're getting for their money. But Spotify has developed its Streaming Advertising Insertion Tool, or SAI, which is designed to dynamically insert relevant advertising into podcasts, rather than playing the same ad for every listener regardless of the listener's demographics. Now, I thought these two tidbits right here were really important, and that's why I brought them up. Now, something that I learned from Elon Musk personally, is for any business to keep growing, they over time need to keep making their product cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And since Spotify relies so heavily on smartphones and smartphones rely so heavily on data plans, as soon as data plans start getting cheaper and cheaper and, and you don't have to pay so much over, you know, unlimited data plans and, and you don't get speed throttled or, or, you know, run out of data, as soon as all of that happens, more people start getting unlimited data plans, which will lead them to getting and venturing out into those apps that actually take up a lot of data, which 
could be Spotify. The other reason I brought this up was the new advertising tool that Spotify uses, the SAI, I believe it was. Their advertisements, regardless if you have premium or not, is going to be specifically curated or, or created for you. Instead of seeing the same old ad about a car brand, now, you know, you might get relevant advertisements for you that you actually might end up buying. Now, my feelings on how they get the information to advertise towards you, those I have different feelings on that. Just on a basic level, I do like the idea of having ads that is it is more relevant to you or I, you know, that just makes sense. Today, Spotify's profit margin are, are low. Gross margin is hovering around 25% to 26% but the company is still slightly unprofitable after overhead expenses. The company may even be able to negotiate more favorable music royalties since it will be much bigger and more important to the music labels as time goes on. That's why investors should buy and hang on to Spotify shares for the next decade. So yeah, we have this 10 years outlook uh, and obviously The Motley Fool feels very confident about Spotify. You really shouldn't rely so heavily on one source of information. So let's look at our friends, the Walled Investor and CNN Money or CNN Business. They really haven't decided. I, they haven't made it clear to me which one they wanna go by. So I'll just call them both. So after Googling future projections of SPOT stock, this is what I came up with from the Walled Investor. From this screenshot right here, the Walled Investor says the current price of spot or Spotify or SPOT is $341.22. The seven day forecast is suggesting that you get it now. The one year forecast is saying it's gonna increase to $510 per share. And the five year forecast is saying that it's gonna be worth over $1,200. So our great friends at thewalletinvestor.com uh, says something similar to what we had found at themotleyfool.com. Uh, so, you know, that's two for two saying that, hey, it's a go. And the five-year outlook, 10-year outlook is actually looking pretty good. So after Googling future projections of SPOT stock and looking into the CNN business side of it, it shows that the current price of Spotify technology is $340.65. The chart, ooh, chart doesn't look too good. It says the 24 analysis offering 12-month price forecast for Spotify technology has a medium target of $255.29, with a high estimate of 306.48 and the low estimate of $118.01. The median estimate represents a negative 25% return decrease from the last price of $340 per share. So our friends at CNN Money has a completely different outlook than both Motley, uh, the Motley Fool and the WalletInvestor.com. We have looked and seen and, and kind of talked about a lot of information in this video. And to be completely honest, the three sources that we looked at all differed kind of on the same important factor, and that's price down the road and future growth. And you know, that's kind of the main reason of this video, so let's recap. You know, I said the chart is strong, uh, especially since, you know, since it IPO'd. Uh, however, I did say that I'd like to see it fall before investing in the first place, right? With data plans and smartphones in general decreasing in price over time, hopefully Apple will follow that trend instead of regurgitating the same product and, and expecting people to pay you know, three months rent or whatever. But it's assuming that you know prices do end up decreasing over time, that'll allow more uh, uh, customers to you know end up using Spotify in the future. And Spotify is actually doubling down on podcasts. And if you didn't notice by them in the Joe Rogan deal, as of December 8th of 2020, Spotify has completed the purchase of Megaphone, which was a podcast specific technology. And I'm not sure that's the last time we'll see if something like that happen. You know, they'll, they'll be acquiring uh, new technologies and, and smaller companies to help them run their podcast company or their podcast uh, section of their company a little bit better. And two out of the three analyst sites that we looked at to see, you know, just to see their thoughts on their future outlook over Spotify, showed Spotify increasing to unbelievable highs uh, in five, 10, 15 years. So now we're at the part of the video where I get to say whether or not I think Spotify is a buy in my eyes. Obviously, not your guys' eyes because you should see a financial advisor. So we have looked at some really interesting data here and I think that Spotify will be around for 5, 10, 15, 20, 
or 30 plus years. And something that I like to keep an eye on is whether or not it's a good time to buy in right now. Obviously with it being at record highs, might not be the best time to buy in. But if we look down five years from now and we see that it creates to whatever, you know, the wild investor or the Motley Fool has said it was going to be, we're gonna be looking back and saying, hey, maybe that was so stupid, we should have been buying in. So, you know, I know I'm throwing both sides of the thing out here, but I'm just saying, as of right now, and using my thought process over you know the uh, volume shelves that we talked about later or, or earlier in the video, I would want it to fall before investing, or I'd want to see it fall before investing. Obviously, like I said already, that I do think that they're gonna be around for the long haul. So, long-term, I'm super bullish right now, Obviously, I wouldn't want to lose money, so I'm gonna hold out from investing into Spotify right now. But, like I said, long-term, super bullish, so don't forget that. Also, don't forget that I'm a YouTuber, and my opinions literally do not matter. So, uh, that's it, and I said what I said. Um, um, you know, guys, let me know what your financial advisors told you in the comment section below. Other than that, that's really all I have for you guys on this one. So, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys, hopefully, very soon, in the next one. Peace. God, that was fun, guys. I wanna run away with you.